Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Nashley with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station, so you can join us anytime you like. We're here at 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the morning. So join us every weekend. We'd love to have you join us. We hope you, we hope we are making a change in your life and your health. And are you really? Are you making progress? Are you doing something positive? Are you feeling fantastic? Are you feeling really healthy? Are you working at it? Are you just listening? That does not make sense. Don't listen to me and not do something positive. Every day you make choices. Make better choices. Choose better food. You know, if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates and sugar, yeah, you're getting temporary energy, temporary energy, but it's going to sap your health. Because eventually you need more carbohydrates and more sugar to keep up the energy level. You'll never win. You only win when you get rid of the carbohydrates and all sugars of any kind and emphasize proteins, fats, vegetables, fruits, and make it a good, healthy life. Oh, add nuts too, nuts and seeds, berries. They're all good, high-quality food. You know, you need all your vitamins and minerals. There is absolutely nothing more necessary for your health than vitamins and minerals. And all those other accessory food factors that we get from good, healthy foods. You can take all the natural medicines in the world. But if you're missing one vitamin or one mineral, you're going to have a deficiency, which will have consequences, which creates ill health. And then rather than supplying the nutrient that's missing, you look for a natural medicine to improve your health. Start with a platform that emphasizes high quality vitamins and minerals. Not a one a day. There's not enough in one tablet daily to give you the nutrients you need to be healthy. You need a minimum of two tablets a day, but that doesn't mean you take two of the dailies you got to find a formulation that does that in two tablets daily. If you're missing zinc or selenium, your immune system is not going to work. So then you try to find a natural medicine to support your immune system. But you'll never have accomplished immune function if you're missing zinc and selenium. You'll never have Good eyesight without vitamin A. You have to have a foundation of vitamins and minerals to be healthy. Emphasize that first. What I like to do is make sure that people get a healthy diet, similar to the ketogenic diet, the paleo diet, the Mediterranean diet, a healthy diet. That gets rid of all your carbohydrates from sugar and pasta and cakes and pies and crackers, whatever, and no sugar. If you want health, you've got to make some sacrifices. You can't have all the junk and be healthy. Not going to work. We have been led down that pathway by the food manufacturers that want to sell junk. Very inexpensive food. But it doesn't have all the nutrients to be healthy. So we have to have a good foundation, and that is always the diet. Food is the foundation of health. Then add a really high quality with all the nutrients, all the clinical essential nutrients that gives you good health. Then I would add omega-3 fatty acids, a probiotic. And use that as your foundation. And then if you need a natural medicine, if you have a cold or a flu, 
But if you have all the vitamins and minerals, more than likely you won't have a cold or flu. Because zinc and selenium will knock it out. So start with a vitamin and mineral supplement. Because our food is not highly nutritious. Even good food, even what I would consider healthy food, is no longer able to have the amount of nutrients that was similar to the food that our great-grandparents ate. It was, it's been proven that we would have to eat eight oranges today that would have the amount of nutrients that was in one orange that our great-grandparents ate. The farming practices today are destroying the nutrition. Not putting back minerals into the soil, using high-powered chemicals to increase growth, to increase more protein. But it's killing the soil, destroying the soil. Then it's spraying the crops because the crops aren't healthy. But they would be healthy if they got all the nutrients from the soil. But we've destroyed the soil. And now we're not getting the nutrients from our food anymore. I just had eight oranges today. Would be equivalent to one orange that our great-grandparents ate in the times of really good farming practices. So vitamins and minerals, start there. Get a good, high-quality, two-tablet-a-day formula. Not a typical one-a-day. There's not enough nutrients there. You can't put all the vitamins and minerals in one little tablet or in just one tablet. It takes at least two. And sometimes I think a formulation that would provide four tablets would be better. I know it's hard, but you know, disease costs everything. It costs our money, our livelihood, our health. We have to go back to building our health with nutrition, not with drugs, and not relying just on natural medicines as well. They're good. They're great. I use them. I would never want not to use them. But we have to build our health first. And that makes sure we have all the vitamins and minerals that are required by the body for optimal health. So today we're going to talk about a variety of topics. We're going to talk about some issues that I think you'll find very interesting. One of my favorite topics is the health benefits of grapeseed extract. Grapes are the most common food consumed in the world. The number one fruit consumed in the world. And it has tremendous health benefits. We can also talk about the spread of death cap mushrooms. We'll also mention why California has banned red dye number three. Yeah, we see it in food. We see it in supplements. But it's not healthy for us. And then we'll talk about why and how vitamin D, like dog, prevents infections. And you know, when you say, I have indigestion, that just means you have poor digestion. So let's talk about that as well. And then stop, stop, stop. Gummy vitamins? And why? And let's take a closer look at blood clots and stroke. Well, we have more planned for today, but typically we don't get through the whole program anyway. So let's start to get into what we can and share as much as we possibly can. So there are three great reasons why you would want to take 
OPCs. Now, OPC stands for oligomeric proanthocyanidins. That's why we call them OPCs. A lot easier. These are OPCs from grapeseed extract. Number one, especially important for the heart and circulation. Grapeseed extract reduces high blood pressure, equally as effective as drugs or other medications. Keeps arteries flexible. 22% reduction in the stiffness of the arteries in a clinical study of overweight, obese men. Grapeseed extract improves circulation. Doubled blood flow in women with chronic venous insufficiency, damaged veins in the legs, varicose veins, swelling of the ankles and calves, can all respond healthily, positively, from grapeseed extract. And men, men who want to have a better sexual experience. 50% of all men between the ages of 30 and 70 cannot have an erection. What causes an erection? Not testosterone. Blood flow. Circulation. So if not not enough blood is flowing into the penis, you're not going to have an erection. It's all blood flow. Circulation. So, think about this. If your penis is not getting blood flow, and also other parts of your body are are not getting any blood flow, or the heart is not getting sufficient blood flow, all cardiovascular disease is based on best circulation, improves venous sufficiency for blood flow. Also, OPCs from grapeseed prevent the brain aging, poor circulation. It stops protein accumulation in the brain, the plaques and the tangles and the tau associated with Alzheimer's disease and cancer prevention and protection. When OPCs are combined with chemotherapy. Yes, that's true. You can combine them with chemotherapy. Doctors would freak out if they knew a cancer patient of theirs was taking OPC along with the chemotherapy. I've heard it over and over and over again from a lot of people that are going through chemotherapy for cancer treatments were told by their physician, take nothing else because doctors are afraid because they don't understand alternative medicine, botanical medicine, and how it can improve, improve chemotherapy treatments, not complement them, or I should say compromise them, but to improve them. When OPCs are combined with chemotherapy, in treatment, resistant colon cancer. The result is 70% reduction in tumor weight, animal models. And research by Dr. Ajay Goyle at City of Hope Cancer Center shows that grapeseed extract, OPCs, can prevent, prevent colon cancer, especially the stem cell for stem stem, excuse me, cell formation. No drug, no drug can do this. Stem cells are produced by cancer cells. And they're left behind. It's it's almost like the acorn being dropped from the oak tree to seed for the next growth of oak trees. Well, cancer cells, when they're killed off, they leave stem cells for new growth. They want to survive. They're replanting themselves. 
They're, they're there for the next generation of cancer. And you see it often. A cancer patient has been treated. Doctor says, we got it all. Everything's fine. You're clear. You know, go about your business. A year later, two years later, cancer comes back again. Now it comes back even more aggressive and harder to kill. But cancer cells themselves are killed off by grapeseed extract. It kills the stem cells as well as the cancer cells. I just had a dear friend who was diagnosed with cancer, colon cancer, stage four. The doctor treating her said to take only chemotherapy, no other vitamin supplement, nothing. And she balked. At first she said, I'll try to do it the way your way. After she gave it some real deep thought, some prayer, she said, I'm going to do what I've read about natural alternative medicines that they can help and not hurt. And she had many tumors in her liver and her colon. So the doctor wanted to remove the tumors. And when he, when, he, when he went in to remove the tumors, he couldn't find any. She said, see what you did? Now I can't see the tumors to take them out. Oh, good Lord, doctor. Don't you see what she did? She reduced the tumors with the combination of alternative medicines like grapeseed extract, like curcumin, like berberine, like melatonin, and agraphis. All of these are natural medicines. Dr. Ajay Goyal wrote a book on treating cancer and preventing cancer with the five most powerful natural medicines. This young lady read that book and went on that protocol and reduced the tumors down to nothing to where the doctor could not see them to remove them. And he thought this was bad. Come on, doctor. That's the problem with the, we have with doctors. They don't realize the impact that some of these powerful natural medicines can do to eliminate and reduce tumors and the, and the weight of the tumor. This is so powerful. So there are other health benefits of grapeseed extract as well. It helps the blood produce glutathione. Now, glutathione is the master antioxidant of the body that protects the DNA and strengthens the immune system. It's one of the most de powerful detoxifiers of the body. And glutathione increases total glutathione levels by 37%. In healthy animals, it doubles the glutathione levels in animals eating poor quality diets, assists the liver in processing toxins and spent hormones. You know, we have to reduce tumors, excuse me, hormones, by going through the liver and breaking them down. Grapeseed extract increases liver antioxidant levels, which is a very wonderful thing to do, by 58%. When you have an impaired liver function, you want to improve liver function. Grapeseed extract and andrographis, another herb from India, improve dramatically liver function. It increases insulin sensitivity and reduces high blood sugar levels. Grapeseed extract reduces blood sugar levels by 75%. You return blood sugar to near normal levels. Type 2 diabetes is not a disease. It doesn't require drugs. It doesn't require any medication. It requires your attention to reduce the sugar in your diet. Of course, when you eat a lot of sugar, where do you think that sugar is going to go? It's going to go in your bloodstream. 
So when the doctor gives you a test and diagnoses type 2 diabetes because he sees so much sugar in your blood, <laughs> that's only because you're eating too much sugar. Where, where can it go? So you don't need pills. You need to pay attention to your diet. Now, if you don't want to, that's okay. I don't, you know, I'm not here to, to blame you for what you want to do. It's your choice. All I'm doing is calling your attention to the fact that when you eat a lot of sugar, all that sugar is going to end up in your bloodstream. And then the doctor does a diagnosis of your for type 2 diabetes. Oh, my God, you've got too much sugar in your bloodstream. Well, when you pull up to the gas tank to fill the gas up in your car, and you just let that hose run for a half hour, you're going to have an awful lot of gas in your car, in your tank, much more than you need. So what's the answer? Turn off the hose. What's the answer for type 2 diabetes? Turn off the sugar. It's not a disease. They made it a disease so they could make you buy a lot of drugs and spend a lot of money and ruin your health because you're not stopping the sugar. You're taking a drug. This does not make sense, folks. Sugar is a poison to the body. Now, it's not an outright poison that after a couple of teaspoons, you're going to drop over dead. But you're going to ruin your health, then in time, you'll drop over dead. Seriously. Sugar is one of the most toxic substances for your body. And grapeseed extract reduces the blood sugar levels by 75%. Grape seed extract is a, uh, I hate the word miracle, but it sure sounds like that way because so many people that have ill health have such astounding uh, improvement of their health when they start taking grape seed extract. Now, here's what you want to take grape seed extract for, especially if you have concerns. Arthritis. OPCs and grape seed extract have tremendous benefits for arthritis. Heart disease and high blood pressure. It lowers blood pressure like any medication. Diseases of the veins, circulatory system, varicose veins, chronic venous insufficiency, diabetes and its complications, especially diabetic retinopathy, blindness. It's one of the most major causes of blindness. Vision problems, including macular degeneration, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and other dementias. And most of these are caused by sugar. And grapeseed extract will lower your sugar and help you maintain a better A1C level. But you got to find a good, high-quality grapeseed extract that has no tannins. Tannins are used to tan leather. That's why they're called tannins. And when you take grapeseed extract that has tannins, those grapeseed tannins are very large molecular particles that can't be absorbed from the intestinal tract into the bloodstream to be able to circulate through the body to all the cells to all the various unhealthy conditions and try to improve them. It can't get in through the intestinal wall, the lining of the intestinal wall, into the blood. So we need very, very tiny, low molecular particles. So if you have a very poor quality grapeseed extract, more than likely there's going to be very, very large potencies and quantities of the very large molecular particles. But that's not all. Now you want to make sure that you get one that's very, very high in low molecular, small molecular particles, not large 
particles that can't be absorbed. And tannins, if you refer to tea, drinking tea, and you know it, it's an astringent, those are the tannins in tea. And that's why people pour milk in their tea to bind to the tannins so it doesn't have such an effect. It smooths out the tannins. If you drink a very dry wine, it'll be very high in tannins. Tannins have no biological value. It does nothing for your body. So look for a grape seed extract that has no tannins. And then you're assured that it's 100% low molecular particles. That means 100% absorption. If you have grape seed extract that has a very high level of the large particles, which are called condensed tannins, you might only get 1% or 2% value out of that grapeseed extract, even though it says grapeseed, it says OPCs, but they're the wrong OPCs. And a really good grapeseed extract will go through a filtering process by weight. There's no solvents used. It's all mechanical. Because these particles have weights, small weight, large weight. The large weight can't go through. It can't go through your intestinal tract, the lining of the intestinal tract, into the blood. So companies can filter them out. So look for a product that says no tannins, French grapeseed extract, to give you the best results for your health. Now I'm going to come back because I'm going to tell you that's not all about grapeseed. I got much, much more about grapeseed right after this, right here. I'm Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. Come back right after these messages. I'll be here. I hope you are too. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend. Same time, same station. We're here for an hour. 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock. To bring more messages to you as to how you can have better health, to use natural alternatives that will give you better results than drugs and no side effects or very, very minor side effects that can be resolved by just discontinuing a product. It doesn't leave you with any illness in the future, no adverse events. We talked about grapeseed extract and the power of grapeseed extract and all the things that grapeseed Grape seed extract can do for your health. It is a, I don't know, I like to say it's a godsend. It really is. It makes that much difference in your health. But not all grape seed is grape seed. In fact, researchers purchased 21 grape seed extracts from health food stores and online. Each sample of the grapeseed extract that was purchased online and at health food stores were tested to determine if it was real grapeseed extract and whether it was potent or not as to how much of the anthocyanidins, the key compounds of grapeseed, how much were there in the grapeseed extract that was purchased. After testing 21 grapeseed extract products, get this, be careful. You have to buy from reputable companies, companies that you can trust. 50% of the products of grapeseed extract were completely, completely fake or subpotent. You're not getting what you are paying for. And now years ago, many of these manufacturers that put out poor quality products reduced their their cost, reduced their price, discounted their, their price. Now they're coming out with schlock products at a very high price because they make more money because people are looking for 
A product judged by price. You can't judge a product by price. Now, out of all these 21 grapeseed extracts that were tested, six products were potent grapeseed extracts. Six out of 21 were the real deal. Boy, that leaves a lot of products that were junk. Nine products were very low, low potency. Barely, barely any OPCs were probably grape seed mixed with red peanut skins. Get that. You know those little tiny Spanish peanuts with the red skins? Well, the red skins were tested to find that they contained some OPCs, but very minor. But when they're ground up, they can test for OPCs, and they look like grapeseed extract powder as well. Now, six products out of the 21 had no grapeseed extract at all. They were entirely peanut skin extracts. And that's really dirt cheap. So, some dishonest, unscrupulous purveyor of products don't care what they sell. They're only worried about the money coming in. Six products had no grapeseed extract at all. They, the capsules contained only peanut skin extract. And really, price has no guide anymore. The products with no grapeseed at all were equal in price or more expensive than the authentic grapeseed extract. Find a company you can trust. Find a company that you appreciate. And you know their products work. And if they don't work, you get a money-back guarantee. But a lot of this is online. And to be honest with you, I think Amazon is is un- unbelievable what they can do. I've ordered stuff from Amazon, Amazon uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I had a private driver. I wasn't a truck. It was a car and driver that was dropping it off at my doorstep at 4 o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine that? How fast that goes through the channels? But they have no idea what they sell. They don't inspect products. They don't test products. Anybody can sell anything on Amazon. The only thing they really clamp down on are unrealistic claims or claims that, like, they would never sell a product for cancer. So they watch out what they sell and and how it is sold, but they don't care what it is that is sold. You can sell garbage. And you are buying the garbage if you buy those products. Go to your health food store. They give you the answers you're looking for. They help you make decisions. They guide you. They give you references. They give you literature. They want to teach you how to be healthy. They have a concern for the customer, the, the, the customers that are coming in. You don't even know who anybody at Amazon. You just get a product. And you have no idea what you're buying. And if you don't have a chance to talk to somebody, how do you know what you're buying? Are you buying one of those six products that had no grapeseed extract at all? If you want to purchase grapeseed, don't you want to have grapeseed in the bottle? How do you know you have grapeseed in the bottle? That's a risk you take when you buy online. Unless you buy a company's products that you have some trust in and some, and you know the reputation, they know what they're there for. And if you buy them online, that's great. Because you're buying a brand, a trusted brand. But if you just go in there and look at products and you buy them willy-nilly, you're taking a risk. It's your money. And you're not going to come back with great benefits. So, 
we need to take care of that. We give you the exact thing you want. So how do you look for a grapeseed extract? What, what, do you, what should you look for? Well, say yes for OPCs. But definitely say no to tannins. The low molecular weight tannins. I should say the low molecular weight OPCs are what you want. These are the oligomeric proanthocyanidins, OPCs. Much, much easier for me to say. They're easy absorption, 100% absorption, significant health benefits. Some grapeseed extracts contain polymeric proanthocyanidins. That means tannins. You don't want tannins. You don't want high molecular weight. You want low molecular weight. When you go through a a filtering system based on weight, the low molecular will go through. That's what you want. You want a capsule filled with low molecular weight OPCs. The high molecular weight, very poor absorption, no comparison to the documented health benefits of OPC, sold as beneficial grapeseed extract, although it does not have the same benefits as OPCs. So choose grapeseed extract that is tannin-free. Now, somewhere between 150 and 1,200 milligrams daily would be a good dosage. If you're very, very healthy and you want to take grapeseed extract just as a maintenance dosage, just for good health, I would say 150 milligrams per day would be a good dosage. If you have high blood pressure, and I always say, if you have high blood pressure, consult with your physician. High blood pressure is a silent killer. And millions of people in this country have high blood pressure. You'll die from high blood pressure and won't know it. There's no signal, no signs. So be careful. Have Work with your doctor and ask to use the grapeseed extract if they will monitor it for you. And then you would use 300 to 600 milligrams daily. A cancer fighter of grapeseed extract would be about 400 milligrams two or three times daily. Now, if you want more information on grapeseed, I wrote a book, and it's called Fight Disease with a Powerful Natural Seed, the Grapeseed Extract. The Wonders of French Grapeseed Extract on Amazon, or click the link on terrytalksnutrition.com. You can buy it in a variety of places. It'll give you the full scoop and all the real research documentation on French grapeseed extract, and OPCs. All right, let's wrap up the grapeseed extract and talk about death cap mushrooms. The The deadly death cap mushrooms. Be careful. Know what you pick. Yes, mushrooms are very healthy. Mushrooms are a good natural medicine, but there are some that are very, very toxic. Death cap mushrooms. They're usually native to Europe, but have been found in North America since the 1930s, especially in California. But now death cap mushrooms are spreading and were recently found in Idaho. These mushrooms are very difficult to tell apart from the edible mushrooms, but they are extremely deadly. We're not talking about just toxic. Yes, they're toxic to the liver and to the kidneys, but they're fatal. They'll kill you. And people die every year after accidentally eating them. I was in Poland many years ago. And I was eating in a restaurant, and I ordered a big plate of mushrooms. 
I think there was a tainted mushroom in my dish. I got so violently sick. I spent three days in bed in Poland. Wow, I didn't think I was going to make it. But I pulled through. <laughs> As you know, I'm here. Um, but I think one of the, one, there were different slices of mushrooms in a sauce. They, they tasted so magnificent. They were so delicious. But I think one was a bad mushroom or maybe a very small piece of one. And although it's not FDA approved yet, but doctors have been saving people's lives from death or needing a liver or kidney transplant by using a drug made from the herb, milk thistle. Milk thistle. You've probably seen it in your garden or in the wild. They grow all over. 90% of people treated with this herb, which has been made into a drug, as part of an experimental protocol, survived their experience. If you ever doubt about a mushroom, the best way to tell if it's safe or not, if you doubt it, don't eat it, throw it out. Don't even think about eating it if you don't know. Because many of them are toxic, many of them will kill you. And never, never eat a mushroom. If you're a newbie about mushrooms, if you pick yourself without checking, without an expert to see if it is really safe. Don't try to be an expert when you're not. It can cost you your life. Now, in the beginning of the program, I told you that California, California, sometimes they don't agree with all the, oh boy, all the things they come up with. But now they have banned red dye number three, which I think the entire country should ban red dye number three. Why? Well, red dye number three is synthetic. It's a synthetic dye made from petroleum. And in the 1990s, the FDA banned, get this, banned it in use in lipsticks and cosmetics because research found that it can cause cancer. But you can still use it in food. Now, that's one to go figure. They banned it for cosmetics. They banned it in lipsticks because research found it can cause cancer. But it's okay to add it to food. Do you quite understand how the FDA functions? The power of money pushing around the FDA. Later research linked red dye number three to behavioral problems in kids. And that's been common with many medical research doctors, but the FDA just turns an eye away from it. And FDA has never banned red dye number three in foods. So while it can't be applied to the skin or the lips, we eat it off, it is found in many processed foods that kids eat. Cookies, sprinkles, candy, canned fruit, packaged baked goods, ice cream. It's in our food. We eat it all the time if you eat these kinds of foods. But not in cosmetics, not in lipsticks. That's too dangerous. And now California has prohibited the use of red dye number three in foods sold in the state and consumer organizations, including Consumer Reports, and the Center for Science in the Public Interest, are pressuring FDA to ban it everywhere. It should be banned everywhere. There's no value for it. Someone who is making red dye number three and are making money from it are pressuring the FDA not to ban it. 
if the FDA is here to protect innocent citizens and they know that it causes cancer, why don't you ban it in food? That's the question. Now, vitamin D reduces the, reduces the risk of severe infection with vitamin D. It's amazing. Sepsis is an extreme reaction to an infection, causing inflammation throughout the body, which can damage organs and ultimately cause the patient to die. We saw that during the pandemic. And when doctor during the pandemic talked about vitamin D and its benefits, they were either chastised or blocked or given a kind of like a reprimand for saying anything about vitamin D. There are quacks. We should listen to the quacks because we learn more good things than bad things. And a new study now looked at the outcomes of older adults hospitalized for septus throughout, it spreads throughout the body, highly inflammatory, and will cause eventually death in many patients. The result of looking at the vitamin D levels in the elderly patients found that 92% of the study subjects had low vitamin D levels and almost half of them were considered severely deficient. So in the week after being admitted to the hospital, death from any cause was 50% higher for people severely deficient in vitamin D. For decades, the FDA only would allow 400 international units as a daily dosage. I think you should have a higher dosage of vitamin D. That's my personal opinion. But based on the research and based on all the doctors that are recommending vitamin D levels higher than normal, are recommending 5,000 to 10,000 IUs or international units per day. I have a hard time raising my level of vitamin D, so I found mine based on the research I did with a doctor. I got my vitamin D levels up to 20,000 units daily to give me sufficient levels of vitamin D that are based on the research that shows it lowers the risk of death and infection and inflammation. Low vitamin D levels reduce immune function, increases the risk of bacterial and viral infections, and the ensuing critical illness and possible death. Now, 5,000 I use, or otherwise now known as 125 micrograms, is a typical supplement of vitamin D dosage. But that can't be true for everyone. I know people that are taking 5,000, and this should make approximately 30 nanograms per deciliter of blood. That's what doctors want. But the alternative physicians that routinely give a vitamin D test to their patients would like it at 60 to 80, not 30. 30 will just get you by. Not going to make you much more healthy. But you want it at 30. You do not, you do not want it at 30, but you want it at 60 to 80. After I took my 20,000, I have mine up to 115. 
But the alternative physician I'm working with likes it at that level because I travel all over the world. I'm in flights many, many times in a month. I meet many people traveling. So to have that added protection without any added side effect has a huge benefit in health. So I would suggest you can go to a clinic, have your doctor send it into a lab for a blood test to find out what your vitamin D level is. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, you should have 5,000 units. Yes, maybe that will work for you. Maybe that won't work for you. So if you take 5,000 and you don't know what 5,000 means in your body, you could be deficient. You would not be severely deficient, but you still would be deficient. So you should know what your level of vitamin D is blood-wise. So check it out. Oh, boy. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Seriously? Stop with the gummy vitamins. It's a thing now. Now they come out with sugar, <laughs> sugar-coated sugar gummy vitamins. All right, you have a lot of sugar in the gummy vitamins. Now they sugarcoat them. And these are supposed to be healthy? Gummies are healthy? Come on, give me a break. And now on the market, they're selling sugar-coated gummy vitamins. Why? Why are, why are they so popular? It's like eating candy. I don't think there's anything positive to say about gummy vitamins. Oh, they taste good. They have pretty colors. Fun to eat. What's missing? The level of clinical dosage amounts of nutrients. You can't put anything in they do in a gummy. I saw a gummy curcumin. 12 milligrams of curcumin. When most people should be taking 500 to 750 milligrams. 12 milligrams, that's a spit in the ocean. Label comparisons between a typical gummy and a quick, high-quality, daily multivitamin in a capsule. Gummy has no vitamin K, no riboflavin, no niacin, no choline, no magnesium, no calcium, no potassium. Gummy has at least 50% less nutrients versus the capsule or tablet of vitamin C, of vitamin B6, vitamin B12, biotin, panathenic acid, iodine, zinc, molybdenum, boron. Oh, but the gummy does have and have lots of sugar from glucose syrup. And more sugar, refined white sugar. It's a sugar, sugar vitamin supplement. I hope you understand. It's only because you like the taste. It's not going to do anything for you. It's sad to say. And that, my friends, I've wrapped this up, this program today. Time for me to leave you with the following messages that Hey, I'll be back. I hope you are too. I'm here every weekend, 8 to 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock, Central Standard Time. You can catch me on my Facebook page. You can catch me on my terrytalksnutrition.com page. Learn more about it. Say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.